we all start as a single cell that divides and divides and divides. An average human lives through 10 quadrillion cell divisions, and in every division, the cells need to copy the DNA blueprint composed of 46 chromosomes that encodes all the information to make a fully grown human being. When a cell has copied its blueprint completely and ensured that both copies are error-free, the cell starts preparing to divide. Newly copied chromosomes must wait attached until they are all perfectly aligned at the cell division plate. That's when they will be pulled apart by the centrosomes to form two new cells. One unattached or improperly attached centromere will block cell division. Defects in this molecular mechanism will give us two cells with an abnormal chromosome number. These cells are called aneuploid. It turns out that two out of three cancers have aneuploid cells. We therefore try to understand how these cells behave in comparison to normal cells. But why is aneuploidy so frequently present in cancer cells? Well, let's compare a human cell to a smoothly running machine. When all of a sudden it is presented with a few extra parts, the machine will stutter and eventually halt or run out of control. This is what we think happens to the cell machinery. And thus, with cells that are suddenly presented with an extra chromosome, aneuploid cells will become less fit and in many cases stop dividing or even die. Similar problems occur with an aneuploid cell that has less than 46 chromosomes. Some chromosomes encode genes that are more beneficial for cancer cells than others. Such genes are called oncogenes. Conversely, chromosomes also encode genes that help suppress cancer. These genes are called tumor suppressor genes. However, each chromosome encodes thousands of genes, and therefore many oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. We think that it is the balance between these two that determines how severely the gain or loss of a chromosome affects the fitness of the cell. Whereas gain of a particular chromosome might reduce fitness significantly, gain or loss of another might have a much smaller impact. Either way, aneuploidy has a negative effect on any cell. Let's go back to the machine metaphor. The extra oncogenes provide the machine with extra power, and loss of some tumor suppressor genes takes away some emergency breaks. However, the rest of the machinery is not prepared for these new conditions. Additional adjustments in its blueprint, its DNA, are needed to make the machine actually work. With these alterations in the machine, the machine can cope with the extra power and start to divide, divide, and divide, and eventually form a tumor. Since we do not fully understand why cells become aneuploid, we try to identify mutations that help aneuploid cells become cancerous. We hope that by identifying these mutations, we will be able to design therapies that reverse their effect. That's what we are trying to achieve in the lab, by making large numbers of cells aneuploid in specific tissues, for instance, skin or white blood cells. We found that in mice, aneuploidy is not cancerous. However, one additional mutation of the aneuploid cells is sufficient to go from aneuploid cells to aneuploid cancer cells. When we analyze the resulting aneuploid tumors, we find several alterations to their cell cycle machinery are present. These alterations might help them cope with the disadvantages that aneuploidy imposes on them. We are now carefully mapping these alterations and investigating which of these alterations are crucial for the cells to tolerate an aneuploid state. We expect that our work and the work of our colleagues investigating aneuploidy will lead to new therapies in the years to come. Such therapies would battle aneuploid cancers more effectively and with fewer side effects than most current therapies and improve the perspective of many future cancer patients.